Welcome to another SSD update about something that might seem uh, very incremental in terms of the upgrade. This is the M500 from Crucial. It is the successor to the older M4, also from Crucial, but has something very, very significant about it. So it still has outstanding performance. It has much better performance consistency than the older M4. But the thing that's really exceptional about the M500 is not the uh, stunningly different look that Crucial has gone for with their SSD here because you can clearly see that they haven't done that. But the fact that it uses new 20 nanometer NAND from Crucial, it uses an updated controller versus the older M4, and because it uses a new NAND process, it actually has the highest flash density out of anything available right now, which means that the high capacity M500 drives are at super crazy competitive price points compared to anything we've ever seen before. The 960 gig M500 is available for a mere $599. So let's get into our performance numbers a little bit. I've got my little performance graphs up here. Now you might be looking at this going, Linus, what's the deal? PC Mark 7 storage suite. Why does the M500 lose to the M4? And I will tell you why. Because of the way the M500 is designed with these high storage density chips, the M500 isn't able to read and write to as many flash chips at the same time as the older M4 is. So I'm gonna let you think about that for a moment. It's kind of, think, it's kind of like RAID 0. If you have more drives that you can uh, read from and write to at the same time, you actually get better sustained sequential performance. So the older M4 at a 128 gig capacity, because we're testing the very smallest capacity M500, this is the worst case scenario, actually has twice as many channels that it can saturate for reads and writes, meaning that it is a much, much better representation of an M4 performance versus this one, which is basically crippled. Even the 240 gig M500 is not gonna perform at peak efficiency. You want a 480 or a 960 gig. So more on this in a moment, but anyway, there you see it. Even at its very worst, the M500 is competitive with the M4. And here's the general breakdown of exactly what all of those scores look like. So you can see that it is especially in things like importing pictures, where that sequential data is very important, that the M500 really falls behind by as much as about 15%. In Addo, you see again the same thing. The M500, particularly on those sequential writes, gets annihilated by the older M4. So, what's going on? More in a moment. So what you've probably realized at this point in time is that the benchmark numbers I just showed you were totally useless. Not valuable at all. So I'm gonna turn this episode into more of a what to look for when you're evaluating the performance of a drive. When you're reading reviews about a drive, what do you actually look for? You have to care not only about what drive is being compared to what drive, but what capacity of drive is being compared to what capacity. What capacity are you actually shopping for? For example, Sandforce drives up until 240 gig improve in performance and past 240 gig actually diminish in performance. So when you're comparing numbers on a chart and you see a bunch of different capacities of SSDs, they're probably not doing it right. The M500 is one of the top performing drives out there. It's targeted squarely at something like a Samsung 840, which the M4 really wasn't that competitive with. It delivers excellent performance consistency, but only with the higher capacities, so the 480 and the 960 that are able to take advantage of that additional read and write channel concept that I explained before. They also are the ones that take advantage of the price benefit because uh, Crucial is using a completely different NAND technology that goes into these that really only has an advantage at higher capacities. That's why the cost per gig on the one terabyte class SSD is much more competitive than the lower priced ones. The last thing that you guys should consider when you're shopping for an SSD size-wise, especially as prices continue to come down, is write endurance. So this is using 20 nanometer MLC which is going to be, well, should be pretty competitive with last generation MLC as once the yields are, are complete. However, Crucial has built in some extra spare area into this particular drive to compensate for any errors. But the other thing is as you go to a higher capacity drive, it gives your SSD more room to work with 
to compensate for any problems. So think about it this way. If you have a 120 gig SSD and you write, I don't know, 100 gigs to it every day, it'll last for a certain amount of time because you only get so many program erase cycles on any given SSD. Now, if you had the same workload, about 100 gigs per day, and you had a 960 gig SSD, it would last almost 10 times longer. And the reason for that is because you can program and erase every cell of the flash on that drive X number of times. So the more flash you have, not only the better your SSD will perform, but also the longer it will last. So thank you for checking out our SSD update featuring the Crucial M500. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from your favorite e-tailer, NCIX.com.